Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a London Fellowship trained spinal consultant neurosurgeon. I'm the founder and lead neurosurgeon of the Spine MD team, overseeing a large network of osteopaths, physiotherapists, and chiropractors treating spine problems. And in this video, I'm going to explain some of the different non invasive hands on therapies offered by diff these different practitioners when they're effective and when you need to be cautious about them. Patients I've seen have used common terms such as uh, massage, spinal manipulation therapy or adjustments when they've seen either a physiotherapist, a chiropractor or an osteopath. And that's because these kind of hands-on treatments are done by all three types of practitioners. When it comes to the spine, there is a lot of overlap um, in what these different types of practitioners do. The physiotherapist probably focuses a little bit more on the muscles and therefore teach you exercises you can do to strengthen um, to strengthen the muscles that support your spine and in guidelines around the world in America the Netherlands um, various big centers who have developed guidelines on managing sort of chronic or acute back pain um, predominantly use exercise as in their recommended guidelines and in other countries spinal manipulation therapy is either a first-line treatment with that or just an adjunct to that, i.e. something you just add on to that. Uh, so I'll explain what the different phrases mean when we talk about hands-on stuff and um, when we use them. Now, I often hear patients use the term massage as a kind of umbrella term for all of these kind of hands-on therapies. Broadly speaking, if you want to be really, if you want to simplify it, you can divide it into two types of uh, maneuvers. This large systemic review looked at all the literature um, around spinal manipulation therapy and it essentially breaks it down into two types of movements when they say manipulation therapy so mobilization which is trying to move um, you know a joint or part of the spine within its natural range of motion and then uh, manipulation where you rapidly under high velocity um, move either the neck or the back and try and crack the back so to speak so you can hear an audible crack so they compared those interventions um, to what is already in the recommended guidelines of exercise and taking various types of uh, painkillers such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. But they also compared it to what are known as non-recommended therapies uh, for back pain. And that's what an actual massage is, i.e. someone simply just rubbing your tissues together, an actual massage as opposed to a manipulation. So when comparing spinal manipulation therapy to the current uh, treatment recommendations of exercise and uh, painkillers, it found similar results in terms of short-term pain relief, but ever so slightly um, better results in function, improvement of function. When you compare it to the non-recommended treatments, such as an actual massage, going to a sports massage or someone to just massage your back, um, the results were were better and therefore the overall recommendation I tend to make and a lot of the people I work with tend to make is that you have that it's a good adjunct to um, exercise and all the other therapies it's not something you treat back pain with alone um, it should be used together with exercise so the way I look at it is if you're in acute back pain um, one of these healthcare professionals has seen you They've made a good assessment of you and they're happy there's nothing sinister going on such as severe nerve compression with loss of function of that nerve um, then these spinal manipulation therapies can get you out of that acute pain in the beginning in the short term um, and then with that if you then engage in some of the physiotherapy exercises or, or, or which is the same exercises that all these different guys will give you they're kind of core strengthening um score, core stabilizing exercises that together um, will give you a good a better long-term outcome with improvement of function so in summary a simple deep tissue massage isn't really going to give you any benefit everyone feels a bit better when they've been uh, massaged but the spine is a dynamic anatomical structure it needs to move the muscles around it need to work so the manipulation therapy can help you regain some motion and function and alleviation of some of that acute pain the exercise is the sort of long-term treatment to uh, prevent these episodes coming back now the controversy lies around um, the safety of of these um, maneuvers the literature, there's, obvious, there's, there's often quite a lot of bias in reporting um, adverse events from, from these studies. People don't often include these, these events when they've looked at previous randomised controlled trials. So you have to interpret 
this sort of stuff with some caution. And certainly that review I just showed you does um, say the same thing. So where I have concern in the neck specifically is if you have an, an underlying disc that could be pinching the spinal cord. So this is an MRI scan we've got here. This is the front of the neck, the back of the neck, this unit here, all of this that I'm scrolling over, uh, my mouse is going over, is the human spine this gray structure here that i'm running um, my cursor along is the spinal cord it lies within the bony spinal canal a type of tunnel if there's a disc one of you know the soft bits of tissue poking out pinching it and you undergo a rapid manipulation such as this shown here that downward flexion i'm just going to go back up to that picture so imagine the head here bending forward rapidly there is a, theoretically a risk that this could push back into the spinal cord and cause more damage. And similarly in the lower back with these rapid manipulations, these are the things you've got to be a bit cautious about. Now, the therapists I work with, the osteopaths, chiropractors, uh, physiotherapists I work with, they're good at making a very good clinical assessment of you to see have you actually got any signs and symptoms of spinal cord dysfunction um, or nerve compression before they try and carry out any of these uh, rapid manipulations and they're not always forward flexion like that they're careful in the in the direction that they manipulate you but it has to be done with caution my, my only concern is sometimes very rarely um, a disc pinching a nerve can be a bit silent. I've seen patients that have quite large disc bulges, although they've got back pain, they don't actually have any nerve uh, nerve signs and symptoms. So it's difficult to tell. You can if you very thoroughly assess someone. So the person assessing you has to be very, very experienced uh, in going through your signs and symptoms with a tooth comb just to really be absolutely clear before doing any of these manipulations. I hope you found that helpful please like the video if you did and please subscribe to the channel it really helps people suffering with back pain or any spine disease find um, information on this channel that can help them please visit our website for further information we're one of the only organizations that has all professions in a network um, of spine care led by a spine surgeon and this way we are able to find you the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting results <laughs>